Hello YouTube, it's Terio here. Some of you might know this already, but I graduated from the University of Melbourne Bachelor of Science degree, and I'm currently doing Masters of Engineering there. Now, throughout my years at the University of Melbourne, I have been through all kinds of up and downs. This is why I have students and friends asking me for advice on how to survive the university. But during the making of this video, I noticed that if I listed all my advice out, it would simply make the video way too long. So here are four advice that I think most of the freshmen would definitely benefit from. Number one, join the university club and society. You want to make as many friends as you possibly can during your first semester. And joining club and society is the best way to do it. This will benefit you a lot throughout your university life. You want to know people from high year levels so that they can give you some help with your assignments and possibly the exams. For example, during my first year, I was friends with a few high achieving students that are at least two years above me. They have given me their past assignments, exam solutions and notes. They have been very helpful. You also want to know people that are taking the same subject as you, so that you can work together during assignments and exam preparation. I personally find myself working more efficiently when I'm working with another person. Now those friendships that you made during your university life, most of them will part ways after they graduate, but you will be glad to have this connection somewhere down the track. But two, you will get assignments that have to be done as a group and you will be expected to contribute evenly however I can tell you that this will never happen someone will always end up doing most of the work and another person will always end up doing a lot less there are a few reasons to this firstly is obviously because of the dead weight freeloaders every now and then you will get one of those freeloaders in your group they always take a task but never finishes it. And the worst part is that they often don't tell you this until the night before it's due. I absolutely hate them, but you have no way to avoid them. Telling your coordinator about it will often make the matter a lot worse. Trust me, I have tried that already. What you can do instead is to leave out this student ID on your assignment and write a short message saying, this student gets zero contribution to the assignment. Personally, I've never done that before, simply because I'm a nice guy. But I knew quite a few people who have done it. Another reason why one person will end up doing a lot more is because everyone has a different expectation in their work quality. Most people only wish to pass the subject, and very few people will be like me who wish to get H1 for all my subjects. This often creates conflict between team members. As I often find people just want to finish their work, but couldn't care less about its quality. So those of us who wish to do well, we will usually just end up doing all the work instead. Now I hate to say this, but even if you did team up with people who receive high grades, it still does not guarantee the quality of work either. I will save the story for another time, but the moral of the story is that, just because people get high grades for all their subjects, it does not mean that they are not retarded. You're better off doing all the work in advance instead of finding all your teammates scrap all their part the night before the due date. Number three, study hard and do not fail any subject. When you fail a subject, you will get into shit lots of trouble. And I really mean it. If you fail two subjects or more in one semester, you will be called to attend a meeting with the unsatisfactory committee. They will basically give you a warning and force you to reduce the amount of subject taken per semester by one. So, you will end up taking three subjects instead of four. If you fail the same subject twice, regardless what subject it is or how far into the course you are, you will be kicked out from the university straight away. Unless you have a very good excuse, such as you were diagnosed with cancer and undergoing intense treatment. I personally know a few people who got kicked out simply because they failed a non-essential subject twice. 
The irony part is that when the university kicked them out, they were taught not to worry because the university would make the best decision for them. Now, some of you might have heard that you can apply for special consideration for your exam and assignments. Yes, it is entirely true. But did anyone tell you that getting your special consideration approved is as hard as getting your fine withdrawn? Just like how you can get a fine without breaking the law, the faculty can disapprove your application without following the university policy. The system is as fair as our society. I can assure you that. Of course, you can always decide to spend few weeks doing nothing else but to fight the faculty. That way, you do have a small chance of getting your special consideration approved. If you want to know how to fight the faculty, I will make another video later explaining exactly that. Now, even if your application is approved, you will still have a very high chance of failing the special exam because they can literally notify you about the supplementary exam time and location only a few hours before it starts and it can happen in the middle of your next semester not to mention that the special exam often does not follow the original format or layout they can also sometimes forget to bring off your pages and only remember to give it to you about 30 minutes before the exam finish the best part it's all your problem to deal with not theirs how did i know because i have been through exactly that i was lucky to get h3 for the exam but the other guy wasn't so lucky though so in conclusion just don't fail an exam number four there are 24 hour facilities if you need to work overnight at the university pretty much all engineering related buildings open 24 hours i personally go to alice hoy and the old engineering building very often i know some buildings are exclusive to master student only but you can always ask people to open the door for you people are pretty nice there also please remember you need to apply for access at your faculty before you can access most of the buildings well that's all the advice i will provide today and welcome to the university of Melbourne. i'm sure you will have a memorable time here do you think these advices are helpful is there any other things that you wish to know Please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe so that I will share you in the near future.